Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we'll be solving this uh, multiple choice physics paper. So um, this is actually equivalent to the paper 4 video that I've uploaded a couple weeks back. So you guys can check that out first um, if you're interested. Okay, so for question 1, which instrument is used to measure accurately, keyword accurately, the diameter of a thin metal wire? And we also need to know what it is that, you know, we're measuring. So in this case, any of them would have worked except for the meter rule unless it, it's bendable or the ruler if it was bendable. But the problem is they won't actually measure it accurately. If you want an accurate measurement, you go with a micrometer screw, micrometer screw gauge. And this is basically what it looks like. And I placed a diagram over here. And why don't we actually try and measure the diameter of this ball right now? So I'm going to make this picture a little bit bigger okay so we have this part right here that's called the sleeve right so let me just highlight that Ooh, okay and we have this part that's called the thimble so if we read the main scale or the sleeve wow okay that is very thick my friend so it's in millimeters okay so you start at zero, then there's a 0.5 and one, so one, two, three, four, and here's a 0.5. So for the sleeve, it's 4.5 millimeters. And then for the thimble, it's um, between 20 and 25. You can say it's around 21. So it's going to be 0 0.21 millimeters, and then you're gonna add them up for the total diameter of the ball from here to here would be 4.71 millimeters and that's your answer so you can see the um, measurement is pretty accurate all right so let's move on to question two so a parachutist is falling through the air at terminal velocity and here I got the um, definition for Google so terminal velocity is the constant speed so the speed is constant uh, that a freely falling object eventually reaches when the resistance of the medium through which it is falling prevents further acceleration. So the medium that we're talking about or we're dealing with right now um, is air and um, air resistance is what you know stops it from further accelerating. It's, it's a type of friction so you know when you're walking um, some surfaces that you walk on are more slippery than others so uh, so those are different uh, so different surfaces have different coefficients of friction and hence why you find some more slippery than the others um, but yeah anyways we need to look at the air resistance or it's yeah the air resistance so the answer is c because the resultant force acting on the parachutist is equal to zero so what that means is that resultant force is the total force right so we have this parachutist, the total force that's um, acting upon them is their own weight and um, drag or air resistance. And in this case right here where they're experiencing terminal velocity, they're equal so they cancel out. That's because, well, they're equal and in opposite directions. And so their acceleration is zero. They're not actually accelerating. They're ch they're not, their speed isn't changing, you know, over time. The speed is constant now in this case here they're accelerating downwards because if you notice by the diagram um, the, the arrow of the weight is much longer than the arrow of the drag and that's because in this um, at the start they don't really have a lot of air resistance now when they open the parachute though the drag because their surface area has increased um, air resistance has also increased so they're actually accelerating upwards which slows them down um, I did get this picture from Revision World, and I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. Okay, so for question three, the curved line on the graph shows the motion of a car. So what's the acceleration of the car at the time? Four seconds. So we did have a similar question in the other um, in the other video, the paper four of this. And basically, when you have a speed time graph, the the slope of it is the acceleration. Now, because it's a curved line, we have to create a tangent, but luckily they've already done that for us, and simply take two points from it. So to find um, 
the slope of a line, you have y is equal to mx plus b, of a straight line that is. Uh, so m is equal to change in y over change in x. So this is like the y axis and the x axis, right? So change in speed over change in time. And you notice that's actually the formula for acceleration, right? So change in speed over time. Okay, so we have the two points. So we have the point 2 and 3. And you can place the 0. So let's actually be good students and uh, place the decimal point. So 2.0, 3.0, zero, and another point is 5.0 and 12.0. Okay, so let's actually solve for it. So m is equal to change in y, so 12.0. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So you have to stay consistent. So um, whenever you're doing the difference, so is the final minus the initial. So if you made this y2, then you, um, you're going to use this one first. So 12 minus 3 over 5 minus 2. So that would be 9 over... 3, which is equal to 3.0 meters per second squared. So the answer is D. Now, um, it's totally normal for you to make this Y2. So if you do, want to do it the other way, as long as you're consistent. So you don't have like a... So if you have like, for example, the point 2 and 3, you're not going to label it as X1 and Y2. That That isn't going to work. They're either both going to be 1 or both of them are going to be 2. Okay? So let's move on. So for question four, the diagram shows a bird in flight. The bird is flying in a horizontal direction to the right. So to the right, to the right, this way. Uh, in which direction does air resistance act on the bird? Like we mentioned before, air resistance is the force of air pushing against the moving object. So if we're moving towards the right, then air resistance is going to move in the opposite direction, which is the left. And so your answer is D. All right. So the gravitational field strength on the moon is 1.6 newtons per kilogram, and an astronaut has a mass of 75 kilograms. So mass, not weight. So what is the weight of the astronaut on the moon? So weight, um, the formula for weight is mass times the gravitational field strength. So we have the mass of 75 kilograms. So you've got to make sure that the units are always aligned, right? Times... 1.6 newtons per kilogram and you'll notice that these cancel out and you'll end up with newtons and that is actually the unit uh, for weight so uh, grab your calculator and let's calculate that that is 120 newtons so C alright so for question 6 a measuring cylinder contains 30 centimeters cubed of a liquid we're at the 30 centimeter mark uh, okay, so some some more of the liquid is added until the liquid level reaches 50. So basically, 50 minus 30 is 20 centimeter cubed of liquid has been added. So the reading on the balance increases by 30 grams. So increases, that is the change, that's the difference. And this is the change that's caused by that extra 20 centimeter cubed of uh, liquid added. So then the density would equal to the mass, which is 30 grams, over 20 centimeters cubed, which is 1.5 grams per centimeters cubed. And that's C. Okay, so let's move on to question 7. So a stone of mass 0 0.12 kilograms is fired from a catapult. The velocity of the stone changes from 0 to 5 meters per second in 0 0.6 seconds. So what's the average resultant force acting on the stone while it's being fired. Okay, so we know Newton's second law, force is equal to mass times acceleration, and like we've mentioned earlier, acceleration is the change in speed over time. So, let's see, the, the velocity of stone changed from zero to five. So this is the final speed, and this is the initial speed. So, uh, let's get acceleration. So acceleration is equal to five minus zero, over 0 0.6 0 well we do want to pay attention to the number of units however this is multiple choice so it's okay if you don't want to but I definitely recommend uh, paying attention to the number of significant digits um, shown 
So 5.0 minus 0 over 0 0.60. And if we place that in our calculators, it does give you um, a weird decibel that you might think, you know, that you might that might scare you, but you don't have to worry. So we're not done yet. Let's find the average resultant force. So then the force is this acceleration times the mass. The mass is 0 0.12. So 8.3 times 0 0.12 kilograms. So this is meters per second squared. This is kilograms. will give you exactly one newton. So one newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. So you can uh, change the units. So there you go. So for question eight, a uniform rod XY of weight 2.0 newtons has a length of 80 centimeters. Okay. Um, the rod is suspended by a thread 20 centimeters from end X. So here's the thread. A weight of 5 newtons is suspended from end x. Okay, a student hangs 6 newton weight on the rod so that it is in equilibrium. Okay, so in this question we're dealing with torque, and torque is a twisting force that tends to cause rotation. So we don't want this rod to rotate this way or the other way, right? We want equilibrium, we want it to stay still and straight. So the first thing we notice is that they told us the weight is 2 newtons. Now the weight you'll always find is at the center of the mass. So the center of this rod will give you the full weight. So that's two newtons, All right? Um, okay, so we have the left-hand side. I'm going to make my point of rotation at the thread. So the left-hand side, you're gonna do force times the perpendicular distance. So if the force is facing this way, right? This is the distance. 20 centimeters and you notice it's perpendicular it's at a 90 degree angle okay so the force is 5.0 newtons times 20 centimeters which is a hundred newton centimeters and then the right hand side we actually have to deal with two forces right so the weight that the student hung and the weight of the rod itself so we don't know where the six newton weight is going to be right I'm just going to place it on this side for now. So we have 2 times 20. And the reason why it's times 20 is because the total length of the rod is 80. And if we chose the center, which is again the center of mass, that would mean from another color from here to here it's 40. And we already know this is 20, so then that would mean that this is also 20 because, well, 40 minus 20 would mean that there's 20 right there. Okay, so the distance, this weight, this weight is from the thread is 20 centimeters plus this weight times whatever distance it is from the thread, which we don't know, we're placing it as Z. So 2 times 20 plus 6 times Z, we know the left hand side should equal to the right hand side because it is in equilibrium, it's not moving, you know, it's not rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. So 2 times 20 is 40 plus 6 times Z, which is 6Z equals to a hundred. Move 40 to the other side, so subtract 40 from both sides of the equation, you'll get 6z is equal to 60. So that means z in total is equal to 10 centimeters because you're going to divide by 6. So 10 centimeters from where? From the thread. So they'll try to trick you and you might go for b, but that's not the answer because they told us what is the distance from the end x, not from the thread. So we're going to simply add 20 to get all the way to x and that's a total of 30 centimeters. Okay, so question nine. A wooden plank rests in equilibrium on two rocks on opposite sides of a narrow stream. The three forces, so P, Q, and R, act on the plank. How are the sizes of the forces related? So keyword, equilibrium, right? So that means the forces acting in opposite directions cancel out or they're equal. So the upward force is equal to the downward, so that means P. So what do we have as upward? P and R, and the downward is Q has to equal to it. So that means P plus R is equal to Q, right? Okay, so question 10, the last question for this video, and then I'll do the other 10 tomorrow or um, 
we'll just you'll be able to see the rest of that before your exams so in order to stay notified when I do upload those videos, you can simply subscribe and click the bell icon um, that's next to the subscribe button. Okay, so for question 10, a ball of mass 0 0.16 kilograms is moving forward at a speed of 0 0.50 meters per second. Okay, so we have this ball right here. It's moving at 0 0.15 meters per second. Okay, um, a second ball of mass 0 0.10, so it has a mass of 0 0.16 kilograms. This one, a mass of 0 0.10 kilograms. And it's stationary, right? It's not moving. So the first ball strikes the second ball. The second ball moves forward at a speed of 0 0.50 meters per second. So what's the speed of the first ball after the collision, right? So this involves the, cons the conservation of momentum. So basically, momentum is conserved in a total system. So the momentum before the ball, uh, the first ball hits the second ball, will still equal the momentum after uh, the collision. So, momentum is mass times volume. Okay, so um, let's actually label these balls so A and B. So, so the mass of ball A. In the before so that's one I'm gonna do one as before and two for the afterwards and the velocity a1 plus the mass of the second ball okay still in the before times the velocity of the second ball should equal to the mass of the first ball afterwards times the velocity right okay two right here and vb2 okay so there's some stuff we can cancel out from now. So the velocity of the second ball in the first uh, situation before they're collided is zero, and zero times anything is just zero. So this is a zero. You can get rid of it. And yeah, so let's solve this. Let's simply uh, substitute the values. So 0 0.16 kilograms times 0 0.50 is equal to the mass afterwards, the mass stays the same, it's not going to be changing, times the velocity of the first ball, which we do not know. So this is what we're trying to find, VA2. Okay, plus the mass of the second ball, 0 0.10 times 0 0.50. Now it actually has some velocity. Okay, so let's use our calculator. So 0 0.16 times 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.08 and 0 0.10 times uh, 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.05. Okay, so now we're going to move the 0 0.05 to the other side, so subtract uh, 0 0.05 from both sides. That will give you 0 0.03, which is equal to 0 0.16 VA2. Divide the whole thing by 0 0.16. So then that VA2 is equal to 0 0.1875. Now, if you notice in the question, they've been using two decimal places throughout. So we're going to simply round. And that would approximately be 0 0.19 meters per second. We're rounding up, right? So that is B. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I wish you guys the best of luck in your exams. All right, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.